Today's presentation will be given by Jack Silver, my colleague and our resident application chemist at Teledynisco. I know that Jack is excited to talk about our new AccuPrep SFC and utilizing its ability to perform stacked injections to increase your purification throughput. At this point, I will hand it over to Jack. Today, we will talk about how stacked injections can improve throughput and efficiency and when they will be beneficial. This webinar is divided into four parts. First, we will describe stacked injections, when and why to use them, and when they will help you. Next, we will talk about column and solvent selection. The third part will describe how to set up and tune stacked injections. We will discuss how to quickly estimate sample loading. And finally, we will show how the flash chromatography is used to quickly prepare samples for stacked injections. So, on to the first part of the webinar. Stacked injections are repeated injections within the same chromatogram. They need to be run isocratically. Because there is no need to equilibrate for each injection and no need to wait for the first peak to elute, stacked injections save both time and solvent. You can purify more sample in the same amount of time, and you can use a smaller column that you have available to purify a lot of sample. Chiral columns, for example, are very expensive, and stacked injections allow a smaller column to be used, saving time and money. Although commonly used for chiral purification, stacked injections work well to polish up achiral compounds with a closely eluding impurity. Peak track software allows the peaks to be collected into a few fraction containers, each container containing a, uh, a peak, and therefore you save time uh, combining fractions. Some people use the term chained injection or injection trains for stacked injections. They mean the same thing. The main disadvantage of stacked injections is the method development time. Aside from column and solvent selection, which may be needed even if stacked injections are not done, one may need three or more injections to develop a method. For a small amount of sample, those three injections may be all that you need to do. However, we will present a workflow that minimizes the number of trial injections. Peak track can help set up the cycle time and time windows. And when running stacked injections, clean samples are important. Peaks that elute before the desired compound create a longer cycle time because we need to wait for that initial peak to elute, while late eluting compounds can elute in the middle of other peaks in the middle of stacked injections. So pre-purifying your sample to eliminate everything except the compound that you want uh, will save time uh, with stacked injections and make that more efficient. Later in this presentation, we will walk through the procedure for stacked injections. Once we have the resolution we need, we can do some calculations to estimate the sample load. Since stacked injections can run over a period of several hours, you can do several things to ensure a successful run. First, check that you have enough co-solvent and carbon dioxide. Make sure the waste container is empty. Verify that the fraction containers are large enough to hold the collected fractions, and also make sure that the fraction container size is entered when starting the purification. If you need to run different container sizes, use the minimum volume for the fill volume. Use the same solvent to prime the injection probe as you will use for the mobile phase and make sure fraction collection is configured correctly. Samples that work best for stacked injections include closely eluding peaks. Peaks with a lot of resolution can often be purified in a single injection just by increasing the load. Enantiomers are commonly run, but samples that just need a simple cleanup of a closely eluding impurity also benefit from stacked injections. 
Samples should have good peak shape with no fronting or tailing. Peaks with poor shape need a longer time between injections due to the fronting or tailing. The tail may also contaminate other peaks. Tailing is often caused when running ionizable compounds. Try to mix an additive to the co-solvent or try a different column. Developing stacked injections has two parts, screening column and solvents, and then determining the mobile phase composition and loading. The first step is choosing a column and solvent. You run different combinations of columns and solvent and choose the best one. This is often done even if you aren't running stacked injections, uh, just to get the best chromatography for a compound. Screening can be done on an analytical system, but many of them are limited to 50% co-solvent, while the AccuPrep can run up to 70% co-solvent reliably, and make sure that the co-solvent is compatible with the column. I run scouting gradients, and I learned several things from these runs. First, will the compound actually run on the column? Do the peaks have good shape? Because scouting runs are fast gradients, bad peak shape will get worse in an isocratic run. Are the peaks resolved? And also, what solvent composition will work under isocratic conditions? These three chromatograms are a sample of warfarin, a chiral uh, mixture. The sample was run on three different columns using the same gradient method and solvent. Denatured alcohol was used as a co-solvent, and the denaturing agent caused the baseline drift. Aside from poor resolution, the CC4 column showed tailing. CCA had better peak shape, but not much resolution. And the CCS has good, both good peak shape and also resolution, which allows more sample to be loaded. Here is an example using different solvents. Piperin was extracted from uh, peppercorns. A silica analytical column was run with methanol and 2-propanol, and the 2-propanol showed much better resolution. This sample has too many early and late eluding peaks to be used for stacked injections. Although this sample is too dirty for stacked injections, it shows how focus gradients can be uh, created. Experienced users can often determine an isocratic or focus gradient via inspection. The time on target algorithm works very well for supercritical fluid chromatography or high performance liquid chromatography and can be used to determine an isocratic method. A preparative gradient was quickly determined from the analytical scouting run, which worked very well. As I mentioned earlier, this sample is too dirty for a stacked injection. Experienced users can often determine an isocratic or focus gradient by inspection. The time on target algorithm works very well for SFC or HPLC and can be used to determine an isocratic method as well as a focus gradient. A preparative gradient was quickly determined from the analytical scouting run, which worked very well. As mentioned earlier, this sample is too dirty for a stacked injection. Before starting stacked injections, let's do a few things. First, verify that the correct solvent is chosen. You don't want the system to stop during stacked injections because they can run for several hours. Setting up the idle configuration keeps the pump running and the system remains pressurized so method development is much faster. I can set an idle time within the system configurations so the pumps keep running while I set up the next step in the purification. We will discuss cleaning the sample later, but remove material that doesn't dilute near the desired compound to keep the column clean and to avoid ghost peaks. Make sure the sample is filtered to protect the injection valve. 
Setting up a stacked injection is very simple in peak track and each step provides information for the next step. First, verify the isocratic method gives the expected resolution with a small injection. Data from this first isocratic run is then used to estimate the maximum loading. A second isocratic run with the estimated loading is then used to set the time windows and cycle time, and after the second run, the stacked injections can be run. First, set up an isocratic run with the expected solvent composition. You will use the auto injector, a syringe on the side of the instrument that allows repeated injections and not the auto sampler. Choose this option by checking the external sample option. <clears throat> also, check post-separation pause, which causes the system to pause between injections so, so adjustments can be made in the chromatography method or uh, injection volume. Turn off fraction pooling for now and inject a small volume of sample for this first run. If the auto sampler was previously used, peak track will remind you to use the correct probe. Prime the probe so it injects the correct amount of solvent, and when you prime it, use the same co-solvent to prime the probe as used in the stacked injection. After the probe is primed, you can tell peak track so it, that it can do the injection after the equilibration ends. The next step is to fine tune the injection. After the first run is complete, look at the retention time and adjust the solvent composition if needed. The edit method button allows access to the method development screen. Increase the percentage of co-solvent to make peak salute faster and decrease the solvent strength by reducing the co-solvent percentage to make compounds elute later. Pressing the edit method button allows the run length to be changed on the main screen and access the method editor to adjust the isocratic method. Remember to change the gradient points at the start and the end of the run. I like the resolution with the solvent composition that I chose, so I use this data to estimate the maximum sample loading. Ideally, the peaks barely touch for preparative chromatography since this is the maximum load that the column can take. The peaks might have a shark fin shape, but as long as the peaks aren't tailing, the peak shape is less important for preparative chromatography compared to analytical chromatography. As more sample is loaded, the peaks get wider, as you can see in the illustration above, as the injection volume is increased. With a sample not affected by ionization or other effects, the peak width increases in a roughly linear fashion. Knowing the current injection volume and the peak width in the test run, I can estimate my sample uh, loading, uh, my maximum loading. My initial run used 0.5 mils, and I calculated a little more than 4 mils for maximum loading. Once the loading is estimated, we can test it with another run. I'm confident about the loading calculation, so I turned on fraction collection in the main screen. The peak collection times will be used by peak track to set the time windows for collection of each uh, peak. I then used the edit button to change the injection volume. I entered the new injection volume and pressed continue with pause because we will need to set up the stacked injection or make other changes if needed. As you can see, four mils worked very well. I still have some resolution, but I only have 20 mils of sample left, so that will only be five injections. I left the injection volume as, at 4 mils as further optimization won't be worth the time and effort for only 5 injections. Use the stack injection button to prepare the stacked injection cycle time and time windows. The system displays a simulated run of 3 injections based on the test run. I collected fractions so peak track suggested collection time windows and a cycle time. 
At this point, you can turn on fraction pooling, so peak 1 always goes into the first container, and peak 2 goes into the next container. Use the Show Single Injection button to display a single simulated injection. This is useful for fine-tuning the time windows because they show up better on the screen. Turning off Show Single Injection is handy to adjust the cycle time, and pressing OK starts the run. The run ends at the programmed number of injections. 40 milligrams was injected uh, at each injection point. The system shows each injection as a different color in the, in the time windows, and cross-hatching in different windows shows the different time windows within an injection. If using the fractionation valve to collect fractions, Use manual control after the run finishes to wash the fraction lines and recover all of your compounds. These washings can go into the containers used for each fraction. 200 milligrams was purified in only 15 minutes and would have taken 25 minutes as separate runs without equilibration. Which causes the question, when should we run stacked injections? Stacked injections do need a little time to optimize. We needed one run to validate the solvent composition determined from the best scouting run uh, to test the retention and verify the resolution. We used the data from this first run to estimate the maximum loading and verified the loading with a second run. And the second run was used to set the parameters for the stacked injection. So what are we optimizing? We are eliminating the equilibration time and using the elution time to the first peak, also called the delay time, to make another injection and eliminating that hold time. These calculations are based on a warfarin example that we use to demonstrate stacked injection because warfarin is a very commonly used model that represents an awful lot of chondral purification. I created a graph for 30 injections and looked at the time needed to run those 30 injections. Doing separate runs needed 260 minutes, while stacked injections needed just above an hour. Plotted in a different fashion, in the same 4 hours and 20 minutes, stacked injections could purify over 4.5 grams compared to about 1 gram in the same time without any optimization. Stacked injections use one-fourth of the time and solvent. If more than about 10 or 12 injections are required, it is worth the time to set up stacked injections. Flash chromatography is a quick way to prepare samples for stacked injections. Flash is a fast way to remove compounds that might interfere with isocratic SFC runs. These compounds may retain on the SFC column and elute later as goat's peaks or interfere with other runs. Flash chromatography is done very quickly in only a few minutes. Although I used a focused gradient to purify uh, these uh, compounds here, uh, it's possible to do the cleanup just with a standard gradient on the flash system without optim optimization. Stacked injections are easily done in peak track. They allow a fourfold improvement in throughput. This saves time, solvent, or allow a less expensive column to be used that is smaller in size. Pre-cleaning samples on a next-gen flash system with ready sub columns can be done very quickly. I thank you for your time in this webinar, and now we will open it up to questions. For those of you that have questions, please enter them in the Q&A function within Zoom, and Jack would be happy uh, to answer. I would also like to draw your attention to each of our social media listings include a QR code. On uh, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, please feel free to scan these like and follow us. This will allow you to keep up with the latest news from Teledyne Esco.
Uh, the first question is, uh, do I have a video of the instrument running the stacked injections? And uh, not at this moment, but we can do that and uh, post it up on our YouTube uh, channel and we'll make a note of that. Uh, does the stack injection have a way to move the peak cut point as elution shifts? Uh, yes, we do, uh, in the sense that uh, we can, uh, you could set the time window larger than the uh, size of the peak. And if the peak moves around inside of there, uh, we could collect the peak uh, or we could collect the uh, everything within that time window by turning off detection. Um, because we're running SFC, the temperatures are held uh, very constant and the, temper uh, the temperature and pressures are held constant. So we don't see a lot of uh, peak shifting, but uh, we can uh, allow you to adjust for that. Let's say you have four injections, how to have peak track shifting the uh, collection points dynamically. Is there uh, any intelligence? Uh, again, uh, we set the time window such that uh, if the peak moves around within the time window, we can still uh, collect it. And uh, that keeps it from going into the other uh, uh, peaks. Uh, next one, are the stacking collection parameters based on time or intensity? We initially set them up based on time uh, but within the time window, we could uh, collect based on peak uh, intensity. It is possible to set it up to collect all and uh, monitor the wavelength so that even if you have a very short peak that comes out, you can still collect it. Uh, are there heat exchangers? And if so, where are they located? I presume that you're talking about the uh, uh, devices to cool the pump heads and keep the carbon dioxide uh, allowed. Uh, yes, we do. And uh, they're usually located underneath the uh, instrument. Uh, this is a follow-up about uh, stacking injection parameters based on time or intensity. Uh, is a combination of both allowed? For instance, if you have a dirty sample, can you still stack the injections and avoid the impurities? And the answer is, uh, to that is yes, we can. What you can do is uh, you can set up a stacked injection and then uh, when the system puts a time window uh, in place for, that, uh, for the impurities, you simply can remove that time window so it will not be collected. Uh, alternatively, you can have a, uh, well, that's the easiest way is just to eliminate the time window so that the time windows only collect the compounds that you want. Uh, lots of good questions over here. Another one, what happens during peak pooling if the system thinks a container is full? Uh, provided that you have enough other containers, uh, the system will just go on to the next set of uh, containers or test tubes. So uh, if you're running, say, a fraction collector with uh, bottles and uh, you have three fractions that you collect, when one of those bottles gets full, it uses the next three bottles. Uh, likewise, on the fractionation valve, if you have you know, three fractions and one of the containers is full, it will move the next three positions on the fractionation valve. Another question is whether the analytical columns have to match the preparative columns. Uh, I presume that uh, that question means that if someone's running, say, a uh, two ethylpyridine for example, on their analytical, will any 2-ethylpyridine work on the prep? And the answer is uh, they'll be close. However, uh, they may not be exact. So you probably will have to fine tune the preparative run uh, going from the analytical. 